With Hasbin Hotel being pushed back to 2024, the amazing Digital Circus may be the most anticipated release in the animation scene of 2023. And it is now out for everyone to enjoy. But as everyone should know by now, just because something is anticipated does not mean it's guaranteed to be good in every possible way, and that rings as true as possible for the pilot of this series. I'm going to go over a summary of what happened in the pilot, so if you want to just get to the review, there should be a time displayed on screen somewhere for you to skip to. The pilot wastes no time in plunging us into the amazing digital circus with a catchy theme song that is interrupted when a new character in the form of a jester is spawned in the middle of it, ruining the performance. She asks the ringmaster of the circus named Kane how she can leave, and a rabbit named Jax interrupts the conversation and tells her that she can't, and that everyone has been stuck in the circus for years, with a talking chess piece named Kinger supposedly being there the longest. The jester refuses to accept this and convinces herself that this is all a dream. Kane then takes her on a tour around the circus grounds showing her off different regions, and then brings her to the void, which he says no one really goes to because it's outside of his control. On the way back, the jester swears she sees an exit door, but Kane shrugs it off as being nothing more than a digital hallucination. Kane changes the subject by asking the jester's name, which she is horrified to realize she can't remember, and Kane explains that nobody can remember their name once they enter the digital circus and that she will have to pick a new one. Kane then uses a name randomizer and gives her the new name, Pomni. To help Pomni transition into the digital circus, he sets up an adventure for everyone to participate in to find sentient shapes called Gloinks who steal everything they come across. Kane wishes the group good luck and disappears before anyone can ask for any further details. Pomni then asks what any of what Kane just said meant, and a Raggedy Ann doll named Ragatha says that Kane's adventures give them something to do so that they don't go insane. Zubal, one of the other residents in the circus, is not at all interested in participating and tries to leave, but the Gloinks dismember her and steal her away. Before they leave to gather the Gloinks, Ragatha mentions that they should ask Kofmo, another resident of the circus, if he wants to join them. Ragatha asks Kinger if he wants to join in getting Kofmo, and he declines, citing that the last time he saw him, he was going insane and rambling about an exit. The group splits up, with Jax, Ragatha, and Pomni leaving to get Kofmo, and Kinger and a girl made of ribbons and a mask named Gangle to start looking for Zubal's pieces. On their way to get Kofmo, Pomni asks why they should even go on these adventures at all instead of looking for an exit. Ragatha explains that everyone tries to when they first arrive, but once they realize that they really can't leave, continuing to look for an exit can drive you crazy and that it's healthier to participate in the adventures. Once they get to Kofmo's room and open the door, inside lies a black, glitchy mask covered in eyes that immediately begins to chase them. Jax quickly escapes, but Ragatha is severely hurt by the creature and begins to glitch, and Pomni tries to help her, but when their hands touch, she begins to glitch as well, so Pomni leaves Ragatha for dead. Once Pomni is able to escape the creature, she goes back to Ragatha and apologizes for leaving her behind, and Ragatha forgives her and tells her to find Kane to take care of Kofmo and fix her up. Pomni searches around the circus for Kane until she eventually finds an exit door. She goes through it and finds herself in an office building's hallways with an exit door after exit door until she sees a computer with the VR headset that presumably transported her to the circus in the first place. Just as Pomni is on the verge of losing her sanity, she goes through another exit door and is transported into the void. Meanwhile, Jax reunites with Kinger and Gangle who find the Gloink Queen and is turning everything into Gloinks. After some bickering between Zubal, Jax, and the Gloink Queen, the creature that used to be Kofmo falls through the ceiling and attacks the Gloink Queen, and the group escapes with Zubal. After spending some time in the void, Kane rescues Pomni and brings her back to the circus, and they meet up with the group. Kinger tells Kane that Kofmo abstracted, and Kane then puts Kofmo into a dark void with other creatures just like him. Ragatha drags herself back to the group, and Kane heals her of the glitchy state she's in and rejoins the group while avoiding eye contact with Pomni. Kane apologizes about the exit doors because he knows how much everyone wanted one, but didn't know what to put on the other side. He congratulates everyone on defeating the Gloin Queen and rewards them with a giant digital feast, ending the pilot with Pomni about to have a mental breakdown. So we have a lot to cover, starting with the characters. Pomni is an outstandingly entertaining character. You know how in most shows the main character is super basic and bland and it's always the side characters who become everyone's favorites? Well, I can't imagine this being the case for Pomni. Her paranoid innocence is oddly adorable and fun to watch. Of all the characters in the show, she has some of the best reactions, which is really smart from a viewer's perspective since just like her, 
we too are learning about this new world alongside her, and due to her essentially being in the same situation as the viewer where she's witnessing and learning, it almost feels like we have a friend to join us on this journey who has a distinct personality instead of being an everyman type of character for the viewer to live vicariously through, and instead vicariously with. On top of all that, it seems like one of the primary focuses of the show is watching this poor girl's sanity unravel, which as terrible as it sounds is one of the most captivating plot points of this pilot, and possibly the show as a whole. I couldn't get enough of Pomni in this pilot, she's entertaining, relatable, and already has a character arc for her being set up, which has piqued my interest. The only thing I would have liked to see more from her is some more interactivity with the rest of the cast, but I will take what I can get since we have Ragatha. Ragatha is the nice character of the show, which may seem really bland, but she's so genuine with her care for Pomni even though she's just meeting her. I would go as far as to say that their interactions with each other are some of the best in the episode. The scene where she's glitching and despite everything that just happened to her, she still cares about Pomni's first impressions of the circus which should be the last of her worries, but she still goes out of her way to apologize, which was such a simple but wholesome moment that became one of my favorite moments of the pilot, which is crazy considering how many eye-catching and absurd things are going on. Usually, I don't like stereotypical nice characters, but there's something very human about this character amidst this cast of cartoon characters with all these quirky gimmicks that somehow made her into one of my top three favorite characters. But of course, I'm in the minority of who my top three characters are when I say that Jax is not one of them. Jax is a perfectly acceptable character, I don't dislike him. He carries a lot of the character interactions, he has some of the best dialogue in the pilot, and he's voiced by Michael Kovac who has the mystical ability to make anyone he voices a fan favorite. The only problem I have with him at the moment is that he feels extremely one note and like Gooseworks was pushing him on the viewer a little too hard. I'm sure he has plenty of potential for character development down the road, but at the moment he feels like he was designed to always steal the spotlight from other characters, which is pretty irritating in a pilot episode where I want every character to shine and he just makes it harder for those characters to do so. For example, there's Zubal, who really got robbed in this pilot. She barely has any screen time, and when she does, she plays out a hardly original stereotype of being the annoyed serious one, and even when she's playing out that stereotype, Jax is there to divert all the attention to him. If anyone needs me, then f*** off. Oh god, oh Jesus! Oh god. Oh, god. oh no, they killed Zubal. Anyway, you guys wanna go get something to eat? Help me, you idiots! Kinda rude, Zubal. Now I don't want to help you. Wait, Pomni's not even here? Wasn't this whole thing for her? Be quiet. I can't hear the escalator. Just like Jax, I don't dislike Zubal, but there wasn't a single point in this episode where she had a chance to stand out from the rest of the cast and is noticeably one note. On the complete other end of the spectrum is Kinger, who never gets too much screen time like Jax, but never gets too little like Zubal, and completely thrives whenever he's on screen. Kinger is the comedic relief character, and he nails that role, resulting in some of the funniest moments coming from him, and can make any scene he's in more entertaining without him stealing the spotlight from anyone. Kinger is a prime example of how to do a comedic character. Never too over the top for him to derail the focus of the scenes he's in, doesn't comment on every single event that happens around him to the point where he becomes annoying, and when he does have a reaction to something it lands more often than not. The same, however, cannot be said for Kane. Kane is much more of a plot device than a character, he sets up the scenarios for the cast to interact with and delivers exposition when needed. The only problem is that he tries to do all this in a comedic fashion and is so over the top that a lot of his jokes don't land. He's definitely the kind of character that should only be delivered in small doses because when he is on screen, he takes control of the scene and makes it more entertaining in a way that is more fascinating rather than an enjoyable way, which is my nice way of saying that he's fun to watch, but not fun to listen to. Thankfully, Bubble exists as Kane's companion and quickly became one of my favorite additions to the cast. 
Just like Kinger, he never steals the spotlight, but always makes any scene that he's in more enjoyable. In fact, the only thing that differentiates Kinger and Bubble is that Bubble's humorous style is more derpy, while Kinger is more random and Bubble has less screen time. I love Bubble and I'm very glad that he's used sparingly because it makes the moments where he is on screen that much more memorable. Speaking of memorable, you know who isn't? Gangle. What a waste of a character. Gangle barely had any screen time and never had a single moment where she stood out. The character's entire gimmick is that she has two personalities, one is happy and one is sad, and throughout the pilot we are only exposed to one. This is such a bizarre choice, the entire gimmick of this character is never actually shown to the viewer throughout the pilot of this series, where first impressions are more important than ever. The half of Gangle we are exposed to is whiny and that's about it. This character is about as basic as they come and the lack of screen time never gave her the chance to prove herself as anything more than the most pointless and unneeded member of the cast. This show has an absolutely massive cast, which is exciting because it allows for plenty of fun character interactions and development, but when you have to juggle so many characters, it can become difficult to give everyone proper amounts of attention and make sure everyone has an active role to play, which the pilot failed to do with characters like Zubal and Gangle. Now, as for the episode itself, this is where things get a little shaky. First things first, this show perfectly represents what the medium of animation was made for. The setting is a visually enticing mess that could only have been pulled off this well in 3D. Murder drones could have been 2D and been fine, but this? This is why 3D animation is popular. The depth and the shapes of everything are so well rendered that I can fully imagine what it would be like to take a step into this world. That accompanied by the simple but captivating premise of being stuck in a digital world where the laws of physics can be stretched in a cartoonish way, but is never so detached from reality to the point where you can't take anything seriously, is prime animation and highlights the best the industry has to offer. So yeah, the setting and premise being amazing is an understatement. But what is actually done with the premise and setting is, uh, well, messy at times. Everything was set up great. The characters, the premise, the setting, only for a lot of the episode to not do that much with it. I know I should temper my expectations since this is only a pilot and a big part of a pilot has to focus on character introduction, but it feels like there is so much set up for this fantastic whimsical world only for it to be barren and underutilized. This may have possibly been the point to really emphasize the creepy liminal feeling of the circus, but a side effect of this is that throughout most of the pilot, I was rarely captivated. The scene that really drives this home for me is when Pomni is exploring the circus and opens these doors with random set pieces inside. Due to the teaser trailer, this scene is what I was expecting the show to be more about where the Gloinks go into these doors and the cast has a venture through these random absurd dimensions to try and capture the Gloinks. But of course, that never happened. Instead, what we get is some baffling narrative decisions. There is never a more important time for the cast to get to know each other and interact with each other than the pilot, only for Pomni to split off from the group for the majority of the episode. Granted, Pomni's adventure was one of the only points after the character introductions where the show grabbed my attention, with her just exploring the madness of the digital circus and the infinite exit door scene with her slowly devolving into madness being my favorite scene in the pilot since it stood out so much and made me feel like something of importance was happening. But then there's the other side of the pilot following the rest of the cast where they meet the Gloink Queen that was uninteresting on its own but really had no reason to happen. It got the characters more screen time, sure, but what did they actually do? They stood there, bickering with the Gloink Queen. Nothing happens. If you're going to have the main character of the show separate from the rest of the cast and you still choose to have them have a subplot of their own, it has to be interesting. Something to show off how they work together or their skills or something to develop their characters. Let's just brainstorm for a minute. Let's just take something random from earlier in the episode like Jax's bowling ball and apply that to the issue that they are trying to solve, which is the Gloinks. 
What if when they met the Gloikidian Queen, Jack Smooth talked his way into making a wager with the Queen, where if her Gloinks can beat them in a game of bowling, they will surrender themselves, and if they win, they get Zubal back, and the Queen admits defeat. In order to balance out the teams, the Queen loans Zubal back to them, and Jack, Zubal, Kinger, and Gangle are all on a team versus the Gloinks. The only problem is that the only one that is any good at bowling is Jack's, so they have to improvise and use their set of skills to win. Kinger would distract the Zoinks with his madness so that the Zoinks are more likely to mess up their shots, and on Zubal and Gangle's turn, Zubal takes herself apart, and Gangle wraps herself around those pieces to form a slingshot that launches the bowling balls, basically assuring a strike every time. The Queen would accuse them of cheating, but Jax would point out that since Zubal and Gangle are technically the ones rolling the balls, and there are no set rules against lofting, there is no rule being broken. This would not only showcase them working together as a team, but would showcase each character playing to their strengths. Is it random? Yes. Is it poorly thought out? Sure. Is it more entertaining than what we got? Without a doubt in my mind. Do not get me wrong though, there are moments in this pilot that are truly impressive. The cinematography of the office hallway scene completely took me off guard with the storyboarder moving the camera in ways that usually only find themselves in movies, and rarely animation, once again using the three dimensions this show has to their advantage. That cinematography, accompanied by the ominous score and lighting during Pomni's near mental breakdown as her laughs turn into inhuman screeches and her face distorts is a scene that encapsulates the horror of psychological degradation in a way that Murder Drones, a show that revolves around horror, has rarely ever come close to. Then there's the ending scene that once again uses creative camera work to highlight the hopelessness Pomni feels alongside the weight of the situation finally hitting her, without a word being said, topped off with an orchestral version of the theme song that nearly gave me goosebumps. Moments like these showed how serious this show is about making sure to come off as more than just a silly internet cartoon, and more of a production with creative depth that leaves an impact on the viewer. Anyways, we can dissect the scenes that make up the pilot all we want, but this is still a comedy show, so that is an important aspect of the pilot that shouldn't be overlooked. This show has a very specific kind of humor that is reminiscent of the lol so random humor that I experienced in middle school. The kind of humor where things just suddenly happen for no reason, or a character says something that is completely unrelated to what's going on. It's not a bad thing. This kind of humor has its audience and garnered some laughs out of me from time to time. The disorienting use of cutaways at random times is the kind of humor I would write if I made my own show. And I basically laughed at every bubble scene, but I could definitely see how this type of humor could be off-putting to certain viewers, since it's not exactly witty or clever and at times can feel lazy. There is also a reoccurring issue of the pacing of things being a little too slow at times and therefore feeling awkward. It actually reminds me of the Murder Drones pilot where some scenes feel too drawn out and as a result, some jokes may not land or there are moments where the viewer is waiting for a scene to cut or for someone to say something, and they don't, and it feels really weird. Cosmo abstracted? Why didn't anybody tell me? <laughs> Your minds transition to the digital plane. But, uh, I swear I saw- DIGITAL HALLUCINATIONS! This could be due to there at times being no background music, which can serve the liminal ambiance, but can also make moments feel even more awkward and drawn out. The pacing is by no means bad, but I think maybe 3-5 to five minutes being cut out could have benefited the pilot a little bit. Lastly, there's the main threat of the pilot, which is the abstraction. I like when there's danger and intense moments in my pilots and the abstractions serve that purpose, when it was around. It doesn't really get that much screen time and when your cast is in this gigantic area far away from the abstraction, they never really truly feel like they are in danger, which I would have liked to see. But regardless, I am glad that the abstraction does exist, because without it, the show would feel like it has no threats or consequences. The idea that the characters will have to battle with their own sanity unless they want to abstract has so much potential to be a great ongoing side threat that gives the viewer a reason to care about what the characters are going through. 
And by showing what could happen to any character in the pilot, it only further emphasizes this point, making it go from something that could have been forgotten to something that the viewer and the characters will have to be wary of throughout the rest of the show. So where does that leave us? Is this a negative or positive review? Well, of all the reviews I have made on this channel, I don't think I have ever felt so mixed on a product. This show's premise grants it nearly limitless potential. It has a strong foundation, a cast of colorful characters, some ongoing mysteries like why this place exists and how to leave that will keep the audience active and theorizing, and overall the production of this pilot is truly high quality in just about every regard. But then there's the awkward pacing, unnecessary subplots, and there are only a handful of moments in this 25 minute pilot that truly grabbed my attention. The Amazing Digital Circus is without question something special, something that has so much potential that the only thing that can stop it from becoming one of the biggest shows on the internet is itself, and if it keeps delivering production quality like it did in this pilot, well, the views will hit new heights unlike Glitch Productions has ever seen. But if the show continues to fumble the narrative, miss opportunities, and waste characters, well, it might still see those numbers anyway, but as we have seen before, once you get those numbers, it doesn't matter how much the production quality improves, people will begin to notice, and once they do, that product that once caused success and celebration will become a source of anger and hatred unlike anything you ever could have imagined.